بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today inshallah we will begin a new chapter that deals with al-iddah or al-adad or the waiting period when a woman is divorced or widowed because we know that there is a waiting period she is not allowed to marry except it finishes and it is not fixed it varies so we will go through this chapter inshallah and try to benefit from it as much as possible hadith number 320 narrated Subay'a al-Aslamiyya who was married to Saad ibn Khawla who was from Bani Amir ibn Lu'ay and he witnessed Badr who happened to die in the farewell Hajj while she was pregnant a while after his death she gave birth after she got pure from a postnatal bleeding, she beautified herself in preparation for proposals. Abu Sanabil ibn Ba'akak, a man from Bani Abdul Dar, saw her and said, Why do I see you beautifying yourself? Are you hoping to get married? By Allah, you won't get married until four months and ten days pass. So Bay'a said, When he said, that I put on my clothes when it was evening time and went to the Prophet ﷺ and asked him about that. He gave me the fatwa that I have become halal to marriage when I gave birth and permitted me to get married if I wish to do so. Okay, this hadith, I think it is clear. First of all, what is meant by the idda? The idda is a waiting period that a woman whether divorced separated widowed or seeking khul' from her husband has to wait before she gets married again in this hadith the idda that we are talking about is the idda of of what of being a widow of death that resulted from the death now Sa'd ibn Khawla if you remember mentioned this name in a previous hadith anyone remembers yes during a time when Saad bin Abi Waqqas was ill and he don't want to die in Mecca as yes that's very good it was in the chapter that we studied when Saad bin Abi Waqqas may Allah be pleased with him was sick in Hajj in Mecca and the Prophet visited him and he was afraid that he will die and he asked the Prophet should I give a will of two-thirds of half of one-third and then the Prophet said, Sa'ad ibn Khawla is the poor one who died in Mecca and was buried in Mecca. His wife was this woman that we're talking about. And she was pregnant at the time when he died. Now, we know that from the Quran, that the idda, the waiting period for a woman who has become a widow is how many days? four months and ten days and this is mentioned in chapter 2 verse 2 3 4 but what happened was that she was pregnant and she gave birth before the four months and ten days and Abu Sanabil who saw her preparing herself before the four months and ten days ended told her that you can't get married until you finish the idda period which was described in ayah 234 of surah al-baqarah so she went to the prophet والسلام, to investigate to learn and this shows us that the companions may Allah be pleased with them used to give fatwa in the lifetime of the prophet والسلام, but he would approve it or disapprove of it and when she told the Prophet ﷺ about what he had said, he told her that he is wrong. As long as you have given birth, then you are able and capable of being proposed to and married. And this is what the scholars differed upon. 
Why? The ayah 234 is very clear that a widow should wait four months and ten days before getting married. But ayah 4 in Surah Al-Talaq, chapter 65, Surah 65, Allah says that those who are conceiving, those who are pregnant, their idda is over once they give birth. وَأُولَاتُ الْأَحْمَالِ أَجَلُهُنَّ أَيَّضَعْنَ حَمْلَهُنَّ Those who are pregnant, their idda is finished when they give birth. So scholars differed, but the most authentic opinion is what the evidence shows, and there is no regard to any opinion that goes against the Quran and Sunnah. So if any scholar says no this or that, we follow only the Quran and Sunnah with the understanding of Salaf, of course. Why there was a difference of opinion? Because as you've seen, the ayah 234 is clear, four months and 10 days. And that is why some of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ said that if a woman is pregnant and her husband dies, what should she follow? The four months and 10 days or delivering? Some companions and some scholars followed that opinion. They said she should follow the furthest of the two. Meaning if she's pregnant, and the husband dies in the morning, and she gives birth in the evening, she should still wait four months and 10 days. But if she is in her third month, and he dies, she should wait six more months until she delivers. But this is not the most authentic opinion. The hadith is clear. Once she delivers, she is capable of being proposed to and get married. And this means that if a man dies in the morning and five minutes later his widow gives birth, this means that her idda is over. In the afternoon or half an hour later, she can get married again. Of course, the marriage cannot be consummated because of her postnatal bleeding of her state. But she can get married on the same day. Also, if she was divorced, if a man divorces his wife while she's in the labor room and after he divorces her, she gives birth five minutes later and she leaves in the evening and she gets married in the evening to another man, no problem. And there are a number of issues that are connected to the issues of idda. For example, when a man dies, does the marriage contract become void? Some schools of thought say so, which means that once a man dies, his wife should wear the hijab. She cannot touch him. She cannot see him. And this is definitely not correct. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ told us that if a woman dies, her husband can wash her. And if the marriage was not valid anymore, that would not be the case. And Aisha said, may Allah be pleased with her. If it were to us, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, none would have washed him except us, the wives of the Prophet. Asma bint Umais, the wife of Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with them all, she washed Abu Bakr when he died, which means that the marriage was still valid in the sense that she can see him, wash him, and he can see her and wash her. But if a woman becomes widow, and she gives birth after her husband died. In the evening, can she wash her husband? Why? Because now the idda is over. Khas, she can marry anyone and she is not related to him because she gave birth on the same day or just minutes before, after his death. Okay, now let us go back a little bit in time and discuss the types of idda. There is idda for a woman who is divorced revocable. How many times of divorce is revocable? Two times. And there is idda for a woman who has been divorced irrevocable. Is there any difference? Yes, there are a number of iddas, by the way. 
the longest of all can be the idda of a pregnant woman because this exceeds for months and 10 days if her husband divorces her or if her husband dies she has to wait all that long until she gives birth the second in length is the normal idda for a widow a man dies how much is she ordered to anticipate and wait for how long for months and 10 days and then we have the idda of three monthly cycles and this is applicable when in the revocable divorce the first and the second he divorces her once she is obliged to wait three monthly cycles before they separate and she can go her way and marry if she wishes so this is in normal cases what about if she does not have monthly cycle this is what we will learn after the break so stay tuned let's come under the shade of the scholars so the issue is a problem of knowledge asim al hakim why do people do bidah imam malik said whoever claims there is a good innovation in the deen Salim Al Amri. He is accusing that Prophet Muhammad did not convey the message. Dr. Mamdou Muhammad. If you know that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did something and I do something else, you have to follow the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Don't follow me. Abdul Rahim Makati. But if each one believes his goal is to please Allah, to follow the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abdul Rahim Green. I think this really is to do with your internal state. Where does the Quran and Sunnah point to? Muhammad Al Sharif. Yeah, let's imbibe from these scholars the fruitful solutions for the problems of the world which one we would take and which one we would leave question to every muslim to every muslim in the shade of the scholars every wednesday and saturday at 11:30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12:30 p.m. uk on peace tv marriage or divorce What's Islamic ruling nikah solution or problem heaven or hell uh, there is a misconception you choose beauty wealth family status virtue decide what you want decide your choice be sad or be happy it's your choice join dr zakir naik in better half or bitter half every friday at 6:30 pm and repeat telecast at 9:30 am uk on peace tv explore the wisdom and balance of islamic law islamic law and the genius of muslim jurists who distilled the essence of the law the law into short statements of potent meaning potent meaning so join me riyaz ansari for a survey of islamic legal maxims appreciate the accountability of islamic laws against all manner of corrupt practices in islamic legal maxims with riyaz ansari every saturday at 6 pm and repeat telecast at 9 am uk on peace tv assalamu alaikum and welcome back so the question was which we posted before the break was what happens if a woman was divorced and she does not have monthly cycle is this possible if she is old meaning what do you mean by old she is like 60s or 70s her menopause i think they call it she doesn't have her monthly period so what is her idda the answer is 3 months okay then we go to something that is less and that is the idda 
which is counted by one monthly cycle. And this is applicable to a woman who is divorced irrevocably. If someone was divorced for the third time, we don't tell the woman, wait until you get three menses. No. We tell her, once you get one monthly cycle, this is an indication that you're not pregnant, go ahead. Also, if someone seeks khul'ah, what is the meaning of khul'ah? When she pays compensation to her husband to set her free. So she bargains and they agree on amount, she gives it to him. This is khul'ah, called. So in this case, we don't tell her to wait three months or three monthly cycles on the hope that they will reconcile. She doesn't want to reconcile and there is no reconciliation. She just grieves and go ahead for one monthly cycle. And the least of all idda is when a woman is pregnant and she delivers in less than that. So if she delivers when he dies, then her idda is over. If she delivers when he divorces her without any reconciliation, her idda is over. Even if it is two minutes or one minute or half a minute after the divorce or the death took place. Almost this is all what I can think of. So if you have any questions. Sheikh, in Jannah, who will be the husband of a wife if she has multiple husbands? Like one died, she married another. Okay, some brothers usually joke about this. And they say, in Jannah, you will be my wife. I don't want you in Jannah. In the dunya, you're with me. And also in Jannah, you should not joke about this. Because in Jannah, things will be different. All the hatred, the grudges, the enmity would be gone. All shortcomings are gone. So you will only see a perfect woman and she will see only a perfect man with nothing that you can look down at or discredit. The question is, if a woman marries a number of husbands, is this applicable? This is. She marries them not at the same time, but this happens because either she's divorced or, for example, widowed. And this happened to this great companion of the Prophet Sam, Asma bint Umais. Her first husband was the great Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, known as the man with the two wings. And she had three boys of him. And he was martyred in Mu'ta, as you all know. Then Abu Bakr as siddiq married her. Because she was a woman of great value. She was a great companion. And she stayed with him until Abu Bakr died and she became a widow for the second time. And then she married Ali ibn Abi Talib, the brother of Ja'far, her first husband. And she had a child of him as well. So to whom would she be in the Jannah? Scholars differed. Some say to the best of them. And the best one is Abu Bakr, without any doubt. Others say, and this is the most authentic opinion, that she is for the last one of them. So if a woman marries five or six people and they die or divorce, she would be with the last one of them, and Allah knows best. Can a man marry a fourth woman when one of his wife is in Idda? In Idda. Can a man marry a woman when his wife is in Idda? Yes, unless he has four wives and he divorced one of them. If a man is married to one and he divorces his wife, he can marry a second and a third and a fourth. Well, still she's in her idda. But if he's married to four, he cannot marry a fifth. And therefore, if he divorces his one of his wives, the four wives, and this divorce is revocable, the first or second, this means that during the idda, He's still married to how many? He's still married to four. She's still in the idda. We have to wait. And when we say that she's still in the idda, revocable divorce, first or second. While the woman is in the idda, they're still married. Meaning, if the husband dies, a man divorces his wife, and after a month, after she finished one monthly cycle or two monthly cycles, he dies. What's the ruling? She inherits him because the divorce is revocable. She inherits him. She is forced to stay the idda for four months 
Okay, what about the month that has gone? This is not counted. The minute he dies, she begins a new idda, four months and ten days. But she inherits him. If he divorces her and she's in the idda and she dies, he inherits her. This is only in the revocable divorce, first or second. If he divorces her for the third time, which is irrevocable, and he dies after ten minutes, she has no idda of death and she does not inherit any single penny of him unless we are sure or certain that he divorced her so that he would harm her. A man with cancer on his dying bed. Doctors say he has few hours left. And the man thinks and says, if I die, she will inherit one eighth of my property. Well, I don't want her to inherit another single penny. My son, call your stepmother. Listen, you're divorced. And he dies. The divorce does not take place because the intention was to harm, not to separate. And the scholars say that this is invalid. Any more questions? Is it compulsory in Khulad that the wife should give the meher back to the husband? Okay, this is dealing with Khulad. And it is not compulsory to return something unless what they agree upon. So if the mahar was much or this less, and they agree on something that is lesser. If he gives mahar of 30,000, and when she is requesting khulr, he says, I only want 5,000, 10,000. This is sufficient. But if he requires the whole thing, as in the hadith, where the Prophet ﷺ told the woman to give him back his garden. He gave her mahar as a farm or a small garden. So when she sought khul' from him, he told him to accept if she gives him his garden and she returned it and the khul' took place. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, what is to be done if the husband dies without giving the mahar to his wife? That's a good question. What do you think the answer is? Any mufti? Yes, Ashi. He owes her, so somebody has to give it for him, whether it be his children or somebody has to give it as a debt. Okay. Return. This is half or partially correct. The dowry, the mahar, is a debt in the husband's wealth, which means that if he dies, nothing is to be given away from his wealth before distributing the debts. And this is known in Arabic, it is combined in four letters, Tadum, T, D, Wow, M. This is in Arabic, so I'm going to give it to you in Arabic. These are the four rights that have to be in order when a person dies. T, for Tajhiz which stands for preparation of the corpse, burial, transportation. So the first thing that happens when a man dies is not we invite guests to eat from his wealth, no. The first thing is we take the money from his wealth, from his property to prepare his funeral. Second thing is dal, which is dain, his debts. So the sons and the daughters want to give us our father's money, wait. We have to pay all of his debts. Who wants money from this man? I need 100,000. This is the paper. I need this. So we give the debts. And among them is the debt for his wife, the mahar. After that, we have wow, which is wasiya, the will. The children are saying, give us our money. He said, wait. Well, there is a will. Open the will. He says, one third of it, give it to building a masjid. So we take one third of it and give it to the masjid. Then the meem, the M, which stands for mirath. Now we can give the inheritance. Mirath means inheritance. Now come, the wife gets one eight, the mother gets one six, the children share, the rest, the boys get twice as much for the girls. This is all the time we have until we meet next time. Fi amanillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.